that was Emily Dickinson's Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Um, what we want to think about is, how does death seem here? Does, tell me the nature of death in this one. Kind. Kind. Like a friend. Like a friend. Gentleman. A gentleman, yes. And the kind of hackneyed about beat to death phrase is, the gentleman caller arrives at her door. I'm sorry, but it's just like you read this in every Sparks Notes, whatever it is. Death is a gentleman caller. Um, <laughs> and he does come to the door like a gentleman because why does he come to her? Because she couldn't go to him. Why not? She's too busy. Hmm? She's too busy. She's too busy. Well, she's too busy to die, so he just kind <coughs> of surprises her. And so he comes to greet her, comes to pick her up. Um, how, does, how does he come for her? What is, what is his mode of transportation? Carriage. Okay. And who is the carriage taking? Who all is in the carriage? And immortality. Thank you. And immortality. So we've got death, um, the speaker who is I. Now, one thing that it's important to note is that this is not Emily Dickinson who is riding in the carriage. We have lots of I died, when I died, I was scarce adjusted in the tomb, all that. How do we know that the speaker is not Emily Dickinson? She when she writes the poem, she's not dead. If she's dead and writing the poem, then I'm really creeped out. Okay. <laughs> so it helps to remember that in a poem, when you get I, this is a created first person character. Okay. It's a narrator. So the, the narrator or the person who is speaking is a, an artistic creation. She's not saying I died and came back to life. As we said, we don't typically run into those people. Okay? Nobody has souvenirs from the other side. Um, so we've got a created speaker who says that she was, and we know it's a she because what is she wearing? A gown? A gown. Typically a man would not be running around in a gown in the 1800s. Okay. Um, now how is she dressed? How do we know that she wasn't quite ready for this event in her life? She dressed for bed? Um, could be for bed, kind of, but... She has a scarf on. She has a scarf on. A scarf on. What word means scarf? Tippet. Tippet. And what's it made out of? Silk. Yeah, silk. Silk what? Netting. Netting, yes. Um, and so gossamer, what does gossamer sound like? I mean, is this like nice and warm or is it... If she's got a scarf made out of netting, what is her scarf like? Is this ready for a blizzard or it's not, that warm. not very warm? It's just cute. Okay, and gossamer is very light, also. Okay, mm -hmm. so is she dressed to go out at night? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so she's actually what this. I mean, where would what, where would one wear a scarf or something on their head that's made out of kind of netting? Even to. Oh. Yeah, she's kind of dressed for a wedding. Yes. It's kind of like she's dressed at least for warm weather or maybe even a wedding because it's kind of like wedding material, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, she's got stuff going on and all this. And is he in a hurry, by the way? He slowly drove. He slowly drove. Yeah, not in a hurry. And I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. Seems like a nice guy. So she puts away her labor and her leisure. She's just gonna, she's not gonna stick around and play backgammon or whatever they would play. She hops in the carriage and she's, and now where does she think, where do they go? Tell me about, if you've read this in high school, what do they pass? A school. A school, okay. What else do they pass? Fields. Fields. Of grain. Grain. Does that represent like the different ages? Yes, because we have children, which would be childhood. Grain, which is like labor. 
growing and so it's mature. And then setting setting center. 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 Which would be close to death. Yeah, old age. <coughs> yeah, that's a nice way to Huh? Old age. <laughs> close to <coughs> death. Okay. So she has gone by the school ground where they see the kids playing, <coughs> she goes by the fields of grain, mature and growing. Um, she's older, and so it's, you know, this is adulthood, I guess we could say. And this is not Wordsworth's adulthood. These are not Wordsworth's three stages or anything like that. It's just, she's grown up now. And then um, the setting sun, old age, or rather the setting sun passed us. And the dews drew quivering and chill. So what's it like? Cold. It's cold. And then she says, four, why is, now the dews drew quivering and chill, it draws that, she's shivering and all of that, because she's not dressed for it, right? She's not dressed for death. Um, well, that's true, how do you dress? I don't know, it's kind of an odd thing to consider. Uh, but she's definitely not dressed for being out at night in this cold, situation. We paused before, now think about this, a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. What did they come to? Tombstone. Tombstone, yes. This is her, this is her grave. And then how long has she been dead? Centuries. Centuries? Yeah, she's, it's since then, it's centuries, but does it feel like it's been centuries? Very short time. So it's it's been centuries since she first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. So she's been dead a long time. Okay. How does death come across to Dickinson? Or how does death come across in this poem to us? Kind of peaceful. Kind of peaceful. Like, just, yeah. Just something you do. Yeah. Just one of those things. <coughs> continuation of this world. Almost like you might get in the Iliad and the Odyssey where oh, you die, you're a shade, you go down to Hades and you hang out kind of like you do in this world. So there's, it's, it's not scary, it's not like that I have no idea what comes next as we got with the, the windows closed and I could not see to see and all of that. So we've got two very different views, right? Okay. Um, now let's as long as we've got a little time. Let's also look at um, the one that is a fly buzzed when I died. Let's look at a fly buzzed when I died. 